The following is an excerpt from Adventures in Grey Polyester, Volume 1, entitled Elevator Problems. Early on in this book, I told you of my encounter with Bob in the basement. I also, to, I also told you that that was the one and only time that I saw him. And it was. However, it was not the only time that he screwed with me. It did not happen often, but every now and again, things would happen which were out of the ordinary and not really explainable. But they were minute and largely unimportant, so they didn't really matter. But this night had me thrown big time. So the date was October 30th, and my shift began at 2200. And it would last until 0600 on October 31st, and I can quite literally hear your eyes rolling at the idea of something happening on Halloween. But bear with me. After all, the event wasn't my idea. But anyway, I digress. I was excited as I had young children who were excited for Halloween. I had arranged to have the evening of the 31st off as well as the early morning of the 1st so that I was free to enjoy the holiday with my kids. But that would be later. The story that I'm going to tell would take place in the early morning of the 31st. The hotel was dead on this night, and I was quite enjoying that. Anyone who works security and says they want an exciting and eventful night probably hasn't been doing it very long or is a complete moron. But alas, my night would not be quiet. Whoops. Almost said the Q word. Allow me to rephrase. My night would not be uneventful for long. At about 0200, yes... I know that it always seems to be 0200, but as I already said, I don't plan these things. The first odd occurrence happened. I boarded the elevator on the first floor and hit the button for the fourth. No issues. Till the car goes by the fourth floor without stopping and goes up to the sixth. A bit odd, but sometimes things like that happened. When I reached the sixth floor, no one was there. But again, these things do happen. And at this point, a reasonable cause could still be theorized quite easily. I hit the button for the fourth floor again. And the car took me to the third. And again, no one was there. I kind of chuckled to myself, which is a normal reaction for me when faced with ridiculousness that lacks any form of sense. I decided to exit the elevator and take the stairs to the fourth floor. Once I exited the stairwell on the fourth floor, I was in front of the elevator door, which opened all on its own. I brushed this off and continued about my business, avoiding the elevator to avoid issues. You know, later on, thinking that maybe I had mistakenly hit the wrong buttons or something earlier. Hey. We all lie to ourselves sometimes, right? I decided to use the elevator again, but this time it was so much worse. I decided I would go up to the sixth floor and work my way down, kind of switch up the tour a bit. I hit the button for the sixth floor and the car goes up. Upon reaching the sixth floor, the car begins to open but promptly closes before I can exit. The car then, seemingly of its own accord, proceeds to bounce its way between all six floors before settling on the first floor and opening. I quickly rushed out of the car amidst a string of expletives. The door closed and would not open again. I used the stairs all night. All things considered, it was a good thing the hotel was, was all but empty for this. But every floor I went on, the elevator door would open, as if it was following me on my tour and trying to coax me back inside. I did not take the bait, as I had had enough of that, and I did not put it in my report for obvious reasons. 
I left that morning and put it behind me and didn't think about it until a few days later when I came back. I went up to Selma. I said, how's it going? She said, great, Ken. How was trick-or-treating with the kiddos? Uh, lots of fun. Hey, I wanted to ask, has anyone reported anything weird about the elevator? When I said this, Jane leaned her head out of the shop next to the front desk. I had no idea she was even in there. She looked at me, kind of smiled, and then returned inside. Weird, but my attention was turned back to Soma as she answered my question. She said, no, why? I said, no reason, just curious. I walked away with Selma looking at me like a cop who knows the perp is guilty, but can't quite prove it yet. Luckily, she didn't harp on it, but about 20 minutes later, Jane walked up to me. She said, it was dead the other night, huh? I said, oh yeah, I think Selma said that there was just one room occupied. Jane said, wow, that's dead. No wonder the elevator went haywire. I stopped. I turned to look at her. She looked as if she was trying not to laugh. I cleared my throat. <clears> throat> okay, you clearly know something I don't. Care to fill me in? She laughed at this. She said, sure, you remember Bob? I said, yeah, I haven't seen hide nor hair of him since that night. Why? She says, Bob likes it. Bob likes it when the hotel is full. The more people in the building, the less chance of him making himself known. I was intrigued, and she could tell, so she continued. The thing with the elevator only happens when the hotel is at its emptiest. Why? I said. She said, don't really know. But if I had to guess, I'd say that when there isn't a lot of people, he might be bored. I said, well, we can't have that now, can we? She laughed at my sarcasm. She said, he just wanted to play with you. I said, I don't play well with others. She grinned as she walked away. Pretty sure he just wanted you as a toy, not an active participant. I thought about it all night. I wasn't sure what to make of it. Part of me thought maybe that it had all been a prank set up by Jane. She did seem to know an awful lot, but she hadn't even been there that night. And beyond that, how would she have even managed to manipulate the elevator in that way? It ended up being one of those things that I had to just let go. With one exception, from that day on, I always asked Selma what our capacity was. And if we were ever under 30%, I would strictly use the stairs and avoid the basement. Better safe than sorry, because ghost or not, I ain't nobody's damn toy to be played with. Thank you for listening. That, again, was an excerpt from Adventures in Great Polyester, Volume 1, entitled Elevator Problems. Feel free, feel free to check out other stories from Adventures in Great Polyester at the Adventures in Great Polyester YouTube channel. Thank you.